There we go. How's it going, guys? It's kind of late slash early. It's like four in the morning. I normally don't. <laughs> I normally don't even do my patch notes discussions when it's this late slash this early at night. Um, but we're here, you know. We're here. It's four in the morning, but I'm always up at this time, anyways. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. This patch is massive, and if you think that we just have a regular patch on our hands here. You have no idea, this patch is absolutely insane. So let's get right into it. We're gonna waste no time. This is the 11 release patch, you know? Patch point three three point oh. 11 is now in the game. So let's get right into it. There's a quick look at what is gonna get nerfed. And first of all, just like the things I wanna just immediately jump to is look at who's getting nerfed, right? Shukai, Sylvia, Emma, Hart, Alex, Cicela, Zahir, and Adela. Damn! That is one solid lineup of nerfs. Also, let's look at the buffs. Lennox, Leon, Magnus, Aya, Kathy, and Fiora. And the adjustments to Nadine, Barbara, Bernice, Kiara, Hyun, and Jackie. This is a very... And off the... Off, okay, and, and Monohoshi's out. This is a very, very solid, like, quick look at the patch. If you want, like, a really solid summary of what's going to happen... This, like, looks like the... Okay, the tier list we just put out yesterday, the one that's basically talking about the uh, Passant NA Roundtable tier list, pretty much echoes all of this. Like, this is essentially S... They mark them S tier, S tier, S tier, S tier, S tier, S tier, and it's like an A or A plus or whatever. Like, this is very on point. Like, I don't know. This patch is already looking really good. Let's look at Eleven. Eleven is the newest character coming to Lumia Island. She is a hammer character, our third hammer character in the game. Uh, she has some some really cool abilities. If you want to check out the the preview for the abilities, they were shown yesterday on no, not yesterday. They were shown no, it was yesterday actually, uh, over on the official Discord, also on Steam. You can check those out. Um, so let's check her out her numbers. First of all, the best passive name in the entire game, Ground. <laughs> Beef. Uh, she drops some burgers on the ground. Eleven can prepare two uh, number eleven combo meals by combining a hamburger and French fries. Her normal attacks deal ten slash fifteen slash twenty extra damage, but her attack speed is ten percent slower. These are two separate passives. Keep that in mind; they're not related. So, just naturally, she deals more damage with her autos, but her autos are a little bit slower. Uh, also, she can combine burgers and french fries to make a special food and every four attacks 11 makes a slider so drops burgers on the ground picking up a burger recovers 50 slash 150 slash 250 hp instantly that is a ton of healing holy crap and uh it also heals for eight hp per second over 20 seconds that is a ton of healing and also this can be picked up by teammates as well after picking up a slider 11 can use an enhanced version of one of her skills enemies can step on sliders to destroy them. This is an insane passive. Like, holy cow, this is so stacked. Uh, the healing already is is, is huge. Um, 250 if you grab a burger, 500, like, yeah, like Valmar just mentioned, 500 if you grab both of them. Keep in mind there is some counterplay as enemies can, you know, step on them to, to, to get rid of them, but that is seriously so much healing. Uh, burger Queen, her cute. 11 slams down her massive burger, dealing 100 up to 220 with a 50% ratio damage in the targeted area. Channeling for longer than one second deals an additional 48% up to 64% damage and slows enemies by 20% up to 40% for two seconds. 11 can channel the skill for up to three seconds. She is slowed by 20% when channeling. I Okay, uh, real quick, before we get into to, to too much more, her passive said that after picking up a slider, she can use an enhanced version of one of her skills. I don't know what the enhancing is. I haven't actually played 11 yet, so I, I don't know for sure. But I don't know how that uh, impacts the rest of her skills, but it doesn't mention it here either as far as I'm aware. So we're going to just ignore that for now. Just assume it's a thing. Uh, food for thought. It's her W. 11 can move while channeling the skill. 11 raises her fork, taunting enemies in a 2 meter radius for 0.6 up to 1 second. The skill is enhanced when channeled for longer than 1 second and taunts enemies in a 3.5 meter radius. Holy shit! 1 to 1.8? 1 1.8? 1 Are you serious? There's no way. Whew. 
that that's gonna be problematic in team modes i can already tell you that is not surviving that is not there's no way that's not going down to 1 to 1.5 in a patch there, there's, there's, there's just no way i'm telling you this right now there's no way 1.8 second aoe taunt for a 3.5 meter radius there's actually no way that survives no way absolutely no way uh is lily the va of 11 yeah lily uh i almost said lily dog lily pichu famous uh otv streamer is going to be the voice the english voice of of 11 which would be really cool squads be like sua 11 yuki stun stacking honestly i'm expecting a lot more like hedgen like shuriken hedgen plus uh 11 i think is gonna be really nuts because hedgen can lock people in place with fears roots slows things like that making it really easy to land uh the, this giant uh what is it taunt i was hoping she's gonna be voiced by scaz you're pretty close but uh no i actually un unfortunately I, I barely lost the bid to lily pichu it's unfortunate for me uh all right up next her e on air 11 sticks her fork in the ground and flings herself through the air becoming unstoppable and deals 110 up to 210 with a 35 percent ratio damage upon landing and an additional 10 percent up to 18% damage based on her enemies missing HP. It is an execute. Uh, the skill is enhanced when channeled for longer than one second and deals 22% up to 33%, wait, no, sorry, 22% up to 30% additional damage and knocks back enemies at the landing zone uh, if you channel for more than one second. 11 can channel the skill for up to three seconds. She cannot move while channeling. This skill also is insane, mainly because of the range, travel range, 12 meters for reference 12 meters is about the range uh what's 12 meters in this game i want to say the entirety of heart ult is around 12 meters but i'm not sure for sure how much does the combo meal heal for i don't know i actually have no idea calorie cyclone so basically this is her mobility skill it's also just that seems insane it's good cc it's probably pretty good damage honestly just seems good Calorie Cyclone. This is her R. Food surrounds 11 for 6 seconds, dealing 50 to 110 damage per second to enemies inside the food ring, and her normal attacks are triggered twice, so she gets double autos for the duration of the 6 seconds. Her next normal skill is enhanced after using Cyclone. Okay. Hang on, what's the cooldown? 60 to 40 seconds? That's so short. 70 SP cost. The 2 meter damage radius. She seems like she's going to be a team mode all-star. Like, I can already tell you this much. Her team ability seems insane on paper. And, of course, we've been wrong before. Like, sometimes characters come out and they're just not that impressive. But keep in mind, she has, like, AoE on actually every one of her skills. Like, literally all of her skills are AoE. She has pretty decent damage. And her bases aren't bad either. So she doesn't necessarily need to uh, build a lot of amp to do a lot of damage. The duration of her ultimate is six seconds. Um... Yeah, man. Just seems so good. And her utility is insane too. Whew. Can't believe it. Anyway, two new skins. Magnolia Oracle and uh, for, for, for Hedgen and Firebat for Adriana. I'm not sure if they're both going to be available right at the start of the patch. Normally they try to release like one a little bit later than the other, but yeah, coming soon. Okay, so the Adriana is going to be a little bit later, probably with the next minor patch. And the Hedgen skin is going to be with this patch. Got some new Luke skins. They're pretty cute. Anyways, we don't want to waste too much time on this beginning stuff because there is so much to get through this patch. This patch is absolutely massive. So, let me read ahead a little bit. And there's like something going on in real life. I got to deal with it real quick. Okay, so system, game prep time and starting MS buff. This is one of the more interesting changes to the patch. I actually didn't even see this was coming and this is pretty cool. Uh, at the start of the game, there's an arrival animation. You don't just like instantly like finish the, the the screen where you're picking your build and it's just like boom you gotta move like that's no time to waste i said there's gonna be a small animation about five seconds long we don't know no, the small animation i don't know how long that is but there's gonna be a five second period where players cannot move and then i assume there'll be like a little countdown and then you can go uh, after that you'll get a movement speed buff for five seconds the buff increases movement speed by 30 percent but is canceled by literally any action other than moving this includes attacking activating a skill opening a box etc the first satellite radar will be active for 10 seconds. What else is being changed? Nadine. Okay, we're going to get into character changes. Nadine, uh, 
This is basically a nerf overall, which is good because Nadine kind of needed a nerf. Um, her base damage is going, sorry, base defense is going up a little bit from 23 up to 26. Her attack power per level, though, is going down from 2.2 to 2.0, which is a pretty significant uh, decrease in scaling damage because she already has plenty of scaling damage in general. Lennox is getting a nice little quality of life buff. The delay between her two hits of Blue Viper, which is her ultimate, is actually a little bit shorter now. So basically it's gonna go slash, slash a little bit faster than it used to. Basically the problem with it before was that you would you would perfectly aim at somebody, you'd perfectly like CC them into a perfectly aimed blue viper, but then like the second slash would still not land because it was just that slow. So it's just a little bit better. Leon, Leon is still out of his depths on Lumia Island in a couple of modes, so we're giving him a slight buff to help. Uh, the pool duration of his passive is going to be about 0.5 seconds longer. Uh, no, 11 comes out in about a day. This is the patch notes regarding 11. Cannonball, or his W. The shield strength is going to be getting increased, actually, at later ranks, going from 180 up to 200 at max rank. The, the attack power ratio unchanged. And E, duck dive. The cooldown is being decreased at earlier ranks, so you have better mobility if you're only putting one point into it, going from 24 seconds down to 20, but no change at later ranks. Magnus. We've made a couple changes to Magnus when we changed the final restricted area system, and it made him slightly weaker than anticipated. His base HP regen is being increased from 0.7 to 1.0. Not a huge change. Uh, what's happening next? Barbara. Okay, so Barbara overall is going to be getting some nerfs, but it's a little bit, a little bit of a change. Uh, big changes though. Retrofit the passive. Less attack power for the turret based on Barbara's uh, attack power, but a little bit more defense, so it's a little bit tankier. The turret has a shorter cooldown overall of 13 seconds instead of 15. Uh, the free electron laser, her W. The damage when hitting enemies with both parts of the laser is going to be decreased from 140% down to 130%. I like that change a lot. Magnetic Cyclone, the E. The cooldown is going to be going uh, down at earlier ranks, but staying the same at later ranks. And overclocking her Q. The cooldown reduction is being increased from 20% up to 30%. And Particle Storm, if you enhance your, your E, the duration is going to be increased by one second. Okay, a lot to unpack there with the Barber changes. Overall, it's supposed to be a nerf, and I think it is. Uh, mainly in the fact that her W damage is a little bit lower. And, like, that's actually really significant. Uh, but the rest of it, I mean, like, this is definitely a buff. Getting more cooldown reduction on RQ means she's uh, going to be higher mobility in general, and a longer duration on, on RE is actually really good for team modes and pretty significant in the late game. So it's it's definitely a nerf to like the more linear strategies, but overall it's just sort of a change. Isn't the buff to her E... Isn't this buff to her E max build? Yeah, it, it kind of is. What's up, Hooters? Okay, Bernice changes. Long story short, it's hard to make Bernice's autos land without reworking the way his autos work. However, there is a slight buff to the projectile speed of his auto attacks, so it is a little bit more likely that they are going to land, but uh, it's not that significant of a buff, but it is a buff nonetheless. Explosive Bullet, his R, it no longer spreads after Bernice dies, which is... You could call that a Bernice buff, but I don't know how that works in team modes. If the Bernice goes down... In a team mode, will it no longer spread? I don't actually know. I think it's when he's full dead though, but I don't know for sure. Uh, the initial, okay, I'm gonna just translate this real quick. The The damage on the initial impact of the bola is going up slightly in the ratio by 20%, but the ratio of the explosion damage, this is the second like hit of the, the bola is actually going to be decreased the ratio by 20%. So it's no it's no change in in a damage or sorry in the damage on a single target, but overall the, the damage is being shifted more to the front. Uh Shukai. Oh god, I love this change. I love this change. Wooters, look away, you don't want to see this one. Shukai is getting a longer cooldown on his E by two seconds at all ranks. This is what I really love. Burnt to a crisp, his R, it's six ticks over four seconds instead of six ticks over three seconds. Love this change. His damage on his ultimate is less bursty and it's a little bit more over time. What this means is that you also have more time to react to it and try and get away from it. Also, 
the damage overall is going to be getting decreased based on your juggernaut stacks instead of being 100 percent juggernaut stacks it's only 80 percent juggernaut stacks and that is a huge huge nerf and, and and genuinely a good one too i couldn't be happier that we're seeing shukai nerfs especially before the eternal return invitational uh I was so sick of seeing Shukai in, in higher rank Korean lobbies that I've been playing in lately, and I'm very, 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 very happy to see this change. Um, Sacella. Sacella changes. I don't even fully understand the numbers on this one, but basically it's something to do with the scaling per player level that's going to be going down, I think? Or no, no, no. No, it's... It, is it? I don't know. I don't know if this is level per skill or level per player. Doesn't matter. I think it's per skill level. I'm not 100% sure. The point is, they're lowering the damage of her passive by a little bit. That's it. Uh, Sylvia changes. We're adjusting Sylvia's fuel, gain, and consumption, making it harder to engage and disengage multiple times by spamming bike skills multiple times in one combo. Uh, that's fake patch notes. Wilson isn't casting faster. Yeah, unfortunately, they ran out of, of, of skill cast time to, to reduce on that. I'm just gonna translate this real quick. You get a little bit more passive for going into a zone, but your skills cost a little bit more fuel. You also are gonna be consuming a little bit more fuel while on the bike. This is a good change. Rather than making it so that you can't use multiple bike combos in a row, like, cooldown-wise, rather than making that feel bad, they're instead just making it so if you are bike comboing a bunch, it's gonna be more fuel costly, and that's the way it should be. It's gonna be a little bit harder to just spam bike combos over and over, and you have to actually care about your fuel consumption a little bit more. So overall, I like this change. It's a nerf to Sylvia, and it's a well-needed nerf as well. Adela changes. Adela was getting a little bit too beefy in the late game from her bonus attack power from attack speed items. Control of the center, the amount of attack speed to attack power like ratio conversion it's going to be just toned down in the later uh, levels of her pass. That's really the, the only change here. The same at the at level 1, a little bit less at level 2, and a little bit less at level 3, going from 1.0 down to 0.8. Castling her E is going to be dealing a little bit less damage on the ratio, and that's it for Adela. Aya changes. Sniper Aya was hit a bit too hard with the adjustments to steady shot in the previous patch. Other weapons have still been good. We're adjusting some assault rifles as well. Okay, translation. A little bit more attack power per level and a little bit less of a penalty on the damage reduction on her W. I think this is fair. Alex. Ooh. Oh, I gotta drink some water. Gotta take a breather. There's there's this patch is so long. We we're like not even close to halfway done. Okay. Infiltration. This is uh Alex's passive. The detection range is a little bit larger, so you're gonna be seeing him a little bit sooner. Movement speed increase is going to be taken down from 2.5 down to 2 seconds. And a double agent, which is his melee E, the cooldown is going to be increased by 2 seconds at all ranks. Emma. Uh, long story short, hat trick. The cooldown reduction on hit is going to be decreased from 3 seconds to 2 seconds. Bunny Morph is getting 1 more second on the cooldown at all ranks. And there's a 5 second built in cooldown for her R instead of 3 seconds. Overall, this is just a good nerf to Emma. It's hitting most of her problematic areas, and I like this a lot. So, good changes. Zaheer, a little bit less damage on the passive. Jackie, the jump distance on her E is going to be decreased from 6 meters down to 5.5, but the attack radius is being increased from 1.25 to 1.4 meters. It's a slight nerf to her ratting, and her... Okay, look, her dash was unbelievably long. You may not have realized this. Like, I know you probably, like, go, oh, yeah, Jackie ratting is, is insane. Her jump distance on her E was one of the longest dashes in the whole game. It's deceptively long how far they could go. I'm very glad that they're nerfing the, the dash range, because it was just, it was absurd before. Kathy, there was a bug fix regarding uh, some stuff. Her R is a shorter cooldown. Kiara, we've got some new rapiers on the way. So let's see what the changes are. She's a little bit more defense shred. She has a little bit more HP at early levels for her plague. The cooldown is going to be longer at later ranks by 10 seconds, but the damage per second on her R is going to be decreased on the flat, but increased on the ratio. So what this means essentially is that they want you to build a little bit more attack power, a little bit more offensive stats in general to compensate for that, uh, that, that increased ratio. And basically to compensate for the fact that she has some good rapiers on the way. 
Fiora. Sometimes landing March and Romper felt weird. Let's try and fix that. The attack delay after March dash is uh, going to be going down from 0 0.09 to 0 0.05. Okay, big change. Heart. Heart E is different now. The first and second dash are a little bit shorter, but the third dash is longer. However, here's the big part. It can no longer go over walls using the first or second dash. I'm gonna drink some water. That's a big change. Heart is one of the best characters in the game and has been problematic for a long time. And hey, the fact that she can't just like freely go over the wall three times now is such a good nerf to heart. Does it address the fact that she has insane damage? Not really, but this is still hurting one of the best aspects of her kit. Her micro dashes aren't going to be as potent anymore, and she can't just like absolutely like super loot an area super well, nor can she just kite you back and forth over a wall three times. This is one of the most essential changes that we've seen in the game. It's basically the Dylan treatment. Yes, Dylan used to be able to go over walls all three times, but now she can only go over the third time. It's the same thing here for Heart. Big, big change. Really good. Okay, what else? Hyunwoo. Uh, this looks like a lot of words, so I'm going to again condense this down to just say they're taking the defense scaling off of his E, and they're moving it to an extra defense damage, defense base damage, after on his next auto attack after bluffing, which is his W. Okay, makes sense. No real shift in the power, other than the fact that it's less loaded onto his E, and I'm a big fan of that change. Okay, uh, that's it for character changes. Weapon changes. Uh, they're going to be looking into gloves over the coming days. They've been doing a little bit too well early game. So let's see the rest of it. Kel, less damage, but some armor penetration. Ooh. Ooh, okay, we're seeing our second armor penetration on a weapon. That's kind of cool. I, I think this might see some play. It's not a ton of armor penetration, but 10% is pretty good. Uh, guitar changes. Love this change. Hurting the, uh, the the ratio on the D skill, the weapon skill for guitar, because it was doing way too much damage before, going from 120 down to 110, or sorry, 120 down to 100, and 200% down to 180% uh, at max rank. Bohemian. Less max HP. Teen Spirit. Hey, it's my change. How about that? <laughs> I literally propose, proposed this exact change and I'm glad it got implemented. Um, I actually proposed that this change got implemented back when Teen Spirit was not yet released with its uh, scaling. I, like, by the way, these are literally the numbers I proposed, so I'm glad they got implemented in the game. Big fan of these changes. I think this, this balances it out a little bit more. Teen Spirit with the scaling before was being changed to uh, essentially be 0 ENAT at, at level 1, 40 ENAT at level 20, which was not acceptable. Um, I proposed this change, what it essentially did was changed it so level 1 it's 12, level 20 it's at like what, 32? 32 ENAD? Which is way more reasonable than 40 ENAD. <laughs> So this is a really good change. I'm a big fan of this. It's making Teen Spirit not oppressive, bringing it back in line because it was just absurd with this patch. I'm really glad they changed it. So yay. All right, dagger change. Damascus Steel Thorn, max HP, 220 up to 250, a slight buff to Damascus Steel Thorn. Axe changes, and there's a new axe, by the way. This is kind of, I, I haven't seen the icon for it because it's not here for some reason, but this is sick. Like, I'm, I'm legit so excited for this axe. It could be broken. Who cares? It, it, it could be cool. Okay, real quick, real quick. Berserk changes. Max stack's going down to four, but the attack speed per stack, or sorry, attack power per stack is going up. So you're essentially getting the same amount of attack power. You just have to hit less times. Attack power increase per stack during the Berserk activation. Same change. Um, The Juggernaut. This is sick. New axe. It's an epic... Axe, light axe plus motor, the stats. Oh, there's an increase in the attack range. I didn't notice that. Good catch, good catch. Yeah, base attack range is going up a little bit. That's kind of significant. Here's the juggernaut. Light hatchet plus motor, 92 attack power, plus 2% attack speed per level. That's up to 40% at level 20, but minus attack range. Negative 0.35 attack range and a little bit of movement speed. This thing seems cool as hell. 
I cannot wait to see this in action. I think this is going to be awesome. I want to see some attack speed axe builds with this. It's got really good attack power too. So this thing could be sick. Two zonable? Is it two zonable? Hold on. What's a light hatchet? That's like what? Feather plus axe, I think? Or something like that? Where's Jackie? Jackie. Where's Jackie? Axe. What the hell is a light hatchet? A light hatchet is a feather and a bamboo. The axe icon is in the Steam version of the patch, and it is the Bone Crusher icon from OGBS. Gotcha. I don't know what that looks like, but thank you for the heads up. Uh, so it's going to be a bamboo plus a feather plus a scrap plus a piano wire plus a battery. I'm trying to think if there's any two zones for that. Hold on. Is there a two zone where you can do that? Hold on, chat. Help me out here. Is there a two zone for that? Bamboo, feather... Piano wire, scrap. I don't think so. Semfac. Yeah, Semfac. You're right. You get the bam. Wait, no, no, no. There's no piano wire. Not. Nah, mm -mm. Then do it. Then do it. Need the piano wire. Yeah. No, it's looking like a three zone, which I think is fair. I, I I like them adding like pretty much every new weapon has been a three zone lately, and I like that. I don't like two zone weapons in general. I would like it if the game just moved towards threes on weapons, like, blanket across the board. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, good change. Cool. Cool new axe. Assault rifle. A little bit less attack speed per mastery level overall. Uh, rapier changes. We're seeing a new rapier added to the game. And also, Joy use nerf. No buff. No nerf. Change. More attack power, less crit damage. New rapier. All right. Hey, 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 hey. Adela people. Kiara people. Check it out. You got a new weapon to play with. S-Stock, this is the one that builds into Red Panther, so we really only need to talk about that, but the recipe is a needle, plus a needle, plus an iron. The attack power, 23. The extra skill damage, plus 12. You can build this in Hotel, by the way. This seems like it might be a griefer weapon, and I'm a little bit concerned. It's another Hotel grief weapon, because Hotel needed another grief weapon. Uh, 12 skill, uh, skill damage and 23 attack power is really good, especially on Kiara and Adela. I could definitely see Adela's, like, slapping face over here in, in Hotel with this. This could be really good. Sorry, I drink a little bit more water. Dude, I'm, like, really thirsty right now. Um, it's three zone minimum, by the way. Okay, three zone for the finished weapon. Red Panther. Okay, here it is. The epic S-Stock plus Crimson Bracelet. So you need a uh, nail, mousetrap, bracelet, iron, and another needle. It's going to be three zone minimum. It's basically like Pond Avenue-ish. You just need a nail after that. There's a couple other ways you could build it too, but that's looking like the main way of playing it. Red Panther is 46 attack power, 20 skill damage, 20, sorry, 225 max HP, and 50% regen. Woo! This thing is absolutely loaded. 20 skill damage and 46 attack power. This thing could be insane. And I can't say this enough. The max HP? Wow. Real. Woo! Like, real scary. Like, I... Yeesh. Ah, I don't like this thing. <laughs> seems really scary on both the characters that are going to use it. Like, legit, this thing seems absolutely insane. Kiara getting a, a skill damage, but also max HP weapon is crazy because her main builds at the moment basically forego all max HP in order to have really good defensive stats. But now she has a rapier that gives her defensive stats, but also gives her flat amp, which is exactly what she wants. Kiara... I wouldn't be surprised if she was high, high, high tier after this. And also, Adela is going to use this thing as well. The SP regen is a little bit less, though, so maybe these characters are going to have to actually build some mana potions. Overall, keep your eyes on this thing. I think it's going to be insane. I actually think it's going to be a little bit broken. Sheesh, as our Razor just said. Crossbow. Expulsion shot buff? Kind of. It's a change. Attack power going from 60, sorry, 60 slash 100 to 80 slash 120. Stun duration on wall hit is going from 1.5 seconds down to 1.12. So buff to the attack power ratio, nerf to the stun duration, but a buff to the cooldown going down to 25 seconds. That is a really significant buff overall. 
crossbow. Sorry, heavy crossbow. The attack power is going to go down from 63 to 55, and the uh, movement speed penalty has been removed. Steel bow going from 60 down to 55. So a little bit less of a griefer weapon in Hotel, but uh, eh, 55 attack power is still pretty decent. Um, dual swords, Loigor and Zar. No attack speed. Love the change. Hate that weapon. Glad to see it. Nunchuck. Breath of the Dragon, the attack range uh, for the D skill is going to be increased. The attack speed per mastery level is going to be increased as well. Uh, did I say decreased? I meant increased. Cerberus. This is the sort of newish nunchuck. Getting a little bit of a, a buff overall. Going to be getting attack power per level. So at level 20, we're going to have 60, sorry, 85 attack power. Kind of good. It levels off at uh, level 10. Kind of good overall. Shuriken. Uh, nerf to Apricot Flower Tag, nerf to Cards of Tyranny, my boy, unfortunately losing 10% crit chance, and Fuma Shurikens losing 2% cooldown reduction. Two-handed sword changes, nerfing overall to the parry damage, which I'm a big fan of. Plasma Sword. Wow. Oh, okay, well, it makes sense. A nerf to Plasma Sword because they're adding an upgrade for Plasma Sword. It's Plasma Sword plus Meteorite. Ooh, Aurora Longsword. It's gorgeous. Oh my god, that thing is beautiful. Aurora Longsword. Epic rarity. Uh, it's going to be 75 attack power and 2 vision range and the skill amplification of 12%. So it's an amp percent weapon for two-handed sword. Huh. Kind of low on the amp though, but I think this is still pretty good. No, 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 hold on, hear me out, hear me out. You say, who's going to use this, but it's not that bad. If it, if it weren't a meteor weapon, this thing would be really good. Yuki will definitely use this in team modes. I can definitely see this getting played on Yuki in team modes. The problem is that it's a meteor weapon. I feel like the numbers should be a little bit better for a meteor weapon. And I feel like if you're going to make the Plasma Sword build around an amp weapon, just l change Plasma Sword to be an amp weapon. Like, ha ha like I hate the fact that the only amp two-handed sword is, uh, is, is a rare weapon. Like, you need to make... Okay. I'm going to maybe propose these changes internally. You need to basically just... Lower the, the the attack power on, on Plasma Sword by another, f like, 4 or something. Give it 8% skill amp, and then bump this thing up to 18% and lower the attack power by, like, 5 or 6. Like, yeah, like how do you guys feel about that? Like, make it so that this thing is still a, a somewhat relevant amp weapon. Not by a ton, but it's somewhat of a, an amp weapon. And this thing is a little bit more of a payoff, because right now the payoff is not really there. Um, but lower the attack power a little bit to compensate it. Yeah, 69 attack power. Yeah, yeah, lower it by 6. Um, I think that that basically makes this a little bit more attractive to me. Overall, I don't like the idea of the only amp weapon being locked behind Meteor, so I'll see if I can get that changed. But for the most part, I, this is a pretty good addition. I like it, and it's got a gorgeous, <laughs> a gorgeous little lightsaber art there. Uh, any other change? Mono Hoshi's out. I don't want to ignore this, because Mono Hoshi's out is one of the most uh, argued about weapons in the last patch. You say barely touched, but I think it's a pretty significant nerf, honestly. it's the, Look, the attack power nerf could be a little bit harder, but the 3% lifesteal is significant. You're going to notice that. 25 down to 22 is pretty big. It could be bigger, but we don't want to gut the weapon to it to the point where it's like unusable. Uh, it's a nerf. I like it. 3% lifesteal. I like it. Uh, sniper rifle. Wait a minute. Sniper rifle normal attack projectile speed is being increased. Does this does this affect Bernice? I don't think it does. Uh, increasing the attack speed, or sorry, the, the projectile speed of sniper rifles. And thank God, good change. Getting rid of all of the movement speed penalties on all of the early game. Uh, honestly, just getting rid of all the movement speed penalties on all of the sniper rifles, I think, right? Are there any that have penalties anymore? Wait, let me check in game. One, two, three, four, five. And there were five that got changed? Nope, that's all of them. No more penalties, thank God. I thought they took those out ages ago, to be honest. They actually didn't. They took the penalty off of the white weapon, I think. And they took the penalty off of some of the purples. But they didn't take the penalty off of all the purples? <laughs> I don't know, it was just weird. And they're buffing Polaris too. 
Uh, keep in mind, this is a scaling weapon now. Okay, what else is being changed? What else is being changed? Spear changes, ooh. Movement speed penalty is being removed from the spears. We're seeing Cosmic Biden becoming a scaler, and that's a buff overall because he's, you, you even out at level nine, so that's actually pretty good. Lance of Poseidon is losing some of its CDR. Big fan of that change, it's a nerf to Shukai. And overall, that is about it. Oh, no, 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 Shadow Stab. D skill, going down to 20 seconds on the cooldown. That's kind of cool, actually. Uh, whip changes. Oh, that bow is so sick. I can't stop looking at it. Thunder Whip. Ooh, Thunder Whip. This thing is going down nine skill amp, but it's gaining a scaling skill amp, which means that you level off at level nine and it scales up from there. This thing might actually be pretty good as you get all the way up to 35% skill amp at level 20. That's kind of sick. Biden has attack. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I did. I thought this was an attack. Whoa. Okay. Thank you, Cherry. Saving me on this one. Misinformation. Cosmic Biden is not gaining attack power per level. So you're not leveling off on attack power. No, it's gaining attack speed per level. Huh? Wait. No. Uh, that. Is that a translation mistake? Or is that real? That might be cool. If that's actually a taxi, that might be cool. Um, but anyway, Thunder Whip. Love this change. This is awesome. Plasma Whip. Hmm. Plasma Whip gaining three Ened. Not a whole lot, but hey, there it is. Tanfa. Mysock gaining some defense. Throw. Flower Bomb losing some attack power, so you can't just one zone this in factory and kill people. Uh, what else? Or is it factory? Maybe it's somewhere else. I thought, I thought it was factory, though. No, 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 it's ball line you need to finish in factory. What do you, where do you finish flower bomb? You can finish flower bomb pretty early. I just forget where, though. Um, bow changes. Jeb's, please clap. Uh, Jeb's altered bow is a new bow built out of mighty bow plus a lace clipper. So that is going to be, what is that? Is it the gunpowder bow? I think so. There's a bow character. Nadine bow. Yeah, it's the gunpowder bow. So rubber plus gunpowder. It's rubber plus gunpowder plus lace quiver for 84 attack power, 33 attack speed, and some movement speed. What the? Ooh, boy, that looks good. It's like a twin bow without healing reduction, but the attack power is higher and less attack speed. Okay, but here's the thing though. Keep in mind, twin bow became a scaler recently. So at level 20, you have less attack power with this new bow, but you have more attack power on the new bow until level what is that what's that like 84 so until level 17 so i mean it's it's definitely a lot better early game right prep weapon for rio it could be yeah you know, this could be sort of a teaser for rio honestly it might be overall i like this thing i don't know if you can two zone it though um lace quiver plus gunpowder uh, yeah, you could two zone it. Of course you can. It's a uh, archery plus a feather, pretty much. No, 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 no. You use a short run. Wait a second. Can you two zone this? Gunpowder plus short rod plus rubber. Is there a rubber feather zone? No. So you can't temple. <sighs> Let's see. Also, how's it going viral? Sem Pond. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sem is gunpowder and feathers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's it's Sem plus any um, short rod zone. No, no, wait, no, no. You, need, you need rubber. No, you, you don't have rubber if you go Sem Pond. That doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. Short rod rubber is dock. Sem dock? Some doc? It's gotta be some doc. Okay. I think I cracked the code. Send doc two zone. Right? Am I missing anything? It, it should be some doc. Okay, I, I'm like 90% sure it's some doc. Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. I cracked the code, guys. Woo! We did it. Teamwork. Uh, so Jeb's Altered Bow is a two zone in, in Sem Doc, kind of cool. Uh, armor changes. We have uh, some some pretty interesting armor changes. We got some new armor for Enet and spell builds. Hot damn. Okay, Turtle Dobok. Cooldown reduction down by 3%. I'm not gonna go over the greens and the blues, not worth it. Covert Agent Uniform, well, it's a blue, but 
you know what I mean. Uh, less cooldown reduction. I'm guessing cool. I'm guessing covered agent uniform builds into something now. No. No, it doesn't. Okay, it's still a blue for some reason. Optical camouflage suit. Going to be gaining two crit chance. Interesting. Tur uh, Dragon Dobok losing some CDR, going from 10% down to 7%. Honestly, completely valid. Uh, tuxedo suit plus dress. It is 6% lifesteal, 18 defense, plus one attack. Sorry, Enad per Ooh, that's a heart chest piece if I ever saw one. Wait a second, that goes up to 20 Enad. And crit damage reduction? Wait, hold on. Keep in mind, Crusaders caps out at 15, but Blazing Dress caps out at 20. So it's, you're gonna have to wait until level 15 for it to be as good as a, a Crusader. So maybe, you know, maybe this is not a heart chest piece. This does kind of seem like maybe a Yuki chess piece? No. No, he needs the attack range from Dobok. I don't know, man. This is just sort of odd. I don't know who really wants this. It's it's sharp. Like, I like the icon. But I don't really know who wants this. Maybe it's, uh... Yeah, someone mentioned Alex. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, like, so dark on my screen. Green costs. Mentioning it, maybe it's an Alex chess piece. Honestly, it might be. It's cool. Uh, high Priest Robes. Handbok plus Purified Water. This is going to be a cooldown reduction chest. Huh. Wait a minute. Is this good? Handbok plus Purified Water. Can you two zone this? Hang on, I get so excited with like, can you two zone this? Where do you two zone this? Things like that. Handbok is uh, not too zonable uh, at the moment, if I'm not mistaken, right? It's like all three zone. So, Handbok is already forcing you into a three zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, compared to EOD suit, I don't know if I like this all that much. The regen and the CDR, it, like, you, yeah, you sure you get a little bit more CDR, but the defense, yeah, sure, the defense is better, but you don't get any max HP, and that feels bad, but you do get some SP regen. So, uh, eh. Not super huge on this. Both of these chess pieces feel super niche, and I don't know what niche they even want to fill. Uh, Bazoo Band lost the crit damage reduction. No one was using that thing anyways. Uh, Sheath of Shah Jahan. Oh, it's, it's getting some, some defense. Sheath of Shah Jahan losing some max HP. Hey, at averse. Yo, everyone, can we at averse? There you go. There's your nerf. Uh, Sword Stopper. It's going to be losing... Wait, did we see any... Uh, no, we see no, no crown nerf, so maybe a verse will still be a little bit upset about that, but whatever. Shah Jahan nerf. Uh, Sword Stopper going from 33 defense down to 36. Or sorry, up to 36. My bad. Uh, it's losing its crit damage reduction, but it's gaining a little bit of... Uh, a little bit some 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 natter. Uh, going from 8 up to 12. Auto Arms. Lo Ooh, Auto Arms buff gaining some crit damage reduction. Kind of spicy. Uh, leg changes, Healy's gains gains some, <laughs> never mind, it loses some out of combat movement speed. Uh, so yeah, at Aversa again, actually. Boots, movement speed is going to be going down a little bit. Combat boots going to be going down a little bit. Bucephalus going down, no, going up a little bit, actually, in movement speed. I actually didn't realize that Bucephalus was down at 2 point, oh, it was down to 0.28 because of the change that they made to, okay, 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 okay. I like these changes. Do you know why they're making these changes? It's because they recently nerfed all of the finished shoes movement speeds, but but buffed your base movement speed as a character across the board. The funny thing is that they didn't actually adjust the movement speed of these like intermediate shoes. So what you ended up with was the, these intermediate shoes actually being super fast. Hold on, wait a second. Yeah, so I ended up with the, the intermediate shoes being like way too, wait, what? Am I crazy? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Intermediate shoes were too fast. Anyway, enough about that. Tachyon Brace, losing some CDR. Ooh, that's a that's a very needed nerf. Brutes of Hermes gonna be a little bit faster. Motivate you to build some Boots of Hermes. Head changes, Chinese Opera Mask. More defense, less lifesteal, and less out of combat movement speed. I'm a big fan of this change. I thought the movement speed on this item was absolutely absurd, so I'm a big fan. Accessory changes, Hawkeye. Two more attack power. Lunar Embrace. Two more skill damage reduction. Don't like that. Don't like that. Don't buff this item. I'm so sick of this thing being so strong. I yeesh, I don't like it. Don't like it at all. I don't like items that counter amp characters so significantly. We've got some new consumables. Sorry, new effects for consumables. The effects will be active during the duration of the recovery of the item. 
Uh, we're also giving a little love to some early game food. Love that. Water heals a little bit more SP. Love that so much. Carp bread, a little bit better. Not quite an int food. Potato bread, still bad. Egg bun, a little bit better as well. But there's a new thing. Tear of Selene. So it's, it's a rare. So blue uh, moonstone plus water. Kind of like making a... Uh, what's it called? Kind of like making the... With the uh, Lunar Embrace, but like, you don't need boiling water. Uh, Tear of Selene, rarity. You're going to be getting uh, 10 attack power while you're drinking it, and the SP recovery is the same as a purified water. That is spicy. And also, yes, I agree with Gano. That is delicious looking, and I really want to drink it. The Forbidden Beverage. This is kind of cool. So it's a drink that gives you attack power while it's ticking. And keep in mind, food only ticks for how long? Five seconds? No, 15 seconds. Well, pfft, my bad. 15 seconds. So it's like a little bit of a buff potion for 15 seconds, and that's actually kind of cool. I don't dislike this whatsoever, and it kind of motivates you to take Moonstone later in the game. And it also... I don't know. It rewards players who, who prepare. I like this. I like this buff a lot. I think this is really cool. And you get two of them. Okay, wait. Now that's a little spicy. You get two of them. Ooh, so it's a 30 second buff overall if you want to just chug both of them. That's actually really cool. Uh, holy water. Hey, wait, why is holy water? Okay, they gave holy water a different icon. By the way, holy water is already in the game. So I guess they're just repurposing holy water altogether. Holy water is now a rare instead of a green. The recipe is mithril plus water. And these stats are plus 10 defense and 800 HP recovery. Finally, you can craft holy water. Fun fact, you used to be able to craft holy water, but they took that out. Uh, anyways, this is kind of cool. So they're basically they're saying like, hey, if you farm well, if you get a moonstone and you get a mithril, you can be chugging, you know, 10 defense and 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 10 attack power food and drink. That's kind of cool. I actually really like that. Uh, the HP recovery is not too broken, so it's not like you're really going to be feeling like, oh shit, you know, they're getting crazy defense and they're healing for like fish and chips levels. I think this is just really cool. It's just giving more uses for Mithril and Moonstone to people who don't necessarily need to use Mithril and Moonstone. Um, so I like that a lot. Trap slash summon changes. We're changing the recipes for drones. Mithril string is a little bit stronger. Drone, okay, they're flip-flopping the recipe of, of recon drone and EMP drone. So essentially, it's gunpowder for recon, dead battery for EMP. Love the change. Um, does it work on the, wait, does it work on the stack? No, it doesn't work on the stack. It says that you have to be recovering. Does not work on the stack. It's only one, only the one that's ticking. Uh, I like this change overall. Mastery, we're toning down the benefits from Shukai slash Sisela exclusive masteries. Uh, HP mastery, basically healing when you deal damage to yourself is being reduced by about half. Okay, I'm gonna get some water. I like went through my water bottle already. Okay. The Hyperloop in Chapel has been re relocated closer to Cemetery, and we're seeing some changes to the starting spawn points of Uptown Chapel, Cemetery, and Temple. So let's break it down. I'm not going to go through all these too deep, but there's some box changes as well. Um, spawns in Uptown... This seems like garbage. I hate that this is a spawn. However, they're adding some new boxes. There's a big box here, a slum, somewhat big box here. Box you already know, box you already know. Another box here. Uh, this one's being removed, I think. So this path is a little more linear. So you get f six boxes to yourself. It's not great. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Like I would much rather spawn in one of these for sure. Huh. Both are drinks. No, 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 no. Holy water's food. Holy water's food. Holy water is already food. If you look in the game, look at holy water. It's already food. Uh, it looks like a drink, but it's food. Trust me. Trust me on this one, guys. Uh, this spawn point still kind of sucks, but they added a few more boxes there, so it's not that bad. Uh, overall, that's pretty good changes, and they're they're removing those over there. All right, what's here? This is chapel. The teleporter is not indicated here, but I assume it's going to be like right here or something. It's just going to be closer to, to cemetery. So maybe, oh, no, no, it's here. I'm blind. Wait a second. This is a huge, huge nerf to, to 
dock. Moving the TP from here to here, that's a huge nerf to dock. That's a big deal. That's like a huge deal. Oh my gosh. Damn, dock feels real bad right now. Uh, sucks for like Rozzy's and anyone who does like beach dock hospital, but it's good to nerf the, the speed of that build. Honestly, I'm kind of a fan of that. Uh, as for the, the, the looting changes here in, in Chapel, this spawn is not great, but you have some more boxes over here, so I guess you can trend this way towards the TP somewhat. There's a spawn over here that's also kind of questionable because they just removed some boxes over here. Uh, Yeah, Chapel spawns seem kind of weird. I don't know if I like this one either because it's just sort of not really buy anything. Chapel spawns feel really weird now. Uh, temple changes. Oh, thank God. They're shifting a lot of the boxes from Temple a little bit forward, so it's just mostly in this main area. It's not as concentrated over in the back half as well, so that's a really good change. I like that. Uh, okay, item frequency adjustments. More fans, more paper. Love it. It's just more everything for Chapel. Kind of more everything in all of these zones. So if you see something pop up here, it's just more of it. Temple's getting no new paper, though. Keep that in mind. Ah, oh, yes. Temple short rods going from five to seven. That's huge. I'm a huge fan of that. Big, big change. Definitely needed more short rods in the game. And cemeteries getting more ice. It's pretty good. Love it. Uptown. What's uptown? More carby water. Yeah, the rest of it's all just good. Hotel's getting more needles and less lemons. It's not at f <laughs> not at fucking four needles. God, that felt so bad before. Temporary restricted area location changes. Uh, due to the narrow entrances, close locations between zones, and inconsistency between characters, we have changed the temporary restricted area locations for Avenue, Hospital, and Alley. I'm surprised it didn't change school because, honestly, this really just describes school. Uh, Alley is now going to be where? Wait, what? I assume this is just a mistake because it just showed Alley twice. Hospital is going to be here, and I assume... Okay, so they're taking out this one in, in Hospital and moving it down to, like, just by the bush. That's actually an interesting spot. I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of interesting. Uh, TBH, I would like more hammers in Beach and Pond. I would too, personally, but oh well. We'll take what we can get. Bats now always drop a surveillance camera. I don't know if that means that they got rid of the loot pool of Bat, or if it's what they already dropped plus a surveillance camera. I'm not too sure, but that's a pretty interesting change. More uh, more cameras in general. I'm a huge fan of this change. I think the game needed more uh, vision. I feel like dying to a bush felt bad, and I feel like the, the cameras kind of got picked up in the early game and dropped on the ground very quickly. So this adds respawning cameras to the game, and I'm a huge fan of that change overall. They're also adding some new bushes. Uh, I wonder, yeah, as I was saying, I don't know if it affects their, their loot pool aside from cameras, but I, I love the fact that they have cameras. Nice flavor. I, I like the flavor. Yeah, yeah, because because bats drop sonars. I, yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, bush changes. There is a bush here near school. Uh, like between, between Avenue and school. There's a bush here in Avenue by the sort of toll booth thing. That's, a, that's actually a really interesting bush. Hotel. There's a bush here. Like that bush a lot. Uh, bush. What the hell? What? What is this bush monstrosity? So this bush was already here, but there's a bush here and a bush here as well. What the? What? What is the? This is a jungle, man. What is happening here? I mean, I, I don't hate this. I actually love shit like this. This is really funny to me, but the, the, the bush jungle over here is, is really spicy. They need to hire a gardener. I love it. Um, bush here in chapel. Another bush here and another bush here. There's another bush jungle. What is happening? It's getting overgrown here on Lumia Island. What the? Anyways, mode balancing. Dagger Shukai in both duo and squad. Wait, wait, really? Really? Huh? Oh, oh, oh I didn't read because I'm I, I jumped to conclusions. Dagger Shukai in both duo slash squad, Alex and squad, and dual swords Jackie in duo have been showing stats above average. However, we're going to see how the nerfs uh, to the characters play out before adjusting them further. Good. I think you should just nerf Shukai though. F fuck it. I hate Shukai. I'm so sick of Shukai. I know Magnus, you're in the chat and you play Shukai. I feel bad, but man, that character is so problematic in team modes. He's in like every good team uh, in high rank. 
squads. I just get the character. I'm so sick of seeing Shukai in, in squads. So, but whatever. I, they already nerfed him. Maybe that'll be enough. I'm not going to go over these. You can read them if you want. Feature changes on watch. New or persisting problems. Again, still looking at axe, hammer, and uh, sniper skill. We did see some updates to the axe skill in this patch. So, hey, good change. I don't mind Shukai getting gutted. You and me both, man. You and me both. Um, our team is working on remaking it, these into whole new skills. Okay, so they've confirmed it. They're not just going to be tweaking the numbers on these skills to make them more playable. They're planning on reworking, remaking the skills overall. That's cool. I'm super excited about that because I, I think all of these skills are super lame. Uh, and I'm a big fan of that. Dual Swords Yuki. Dual Swords Yuki solo adjustments were present for a long time, and the removal of his adjustments damaged him quite a bit. For problems regarding different power levels between weapons for one character, rather than adjusting basic stats, we want to solve this problem by giving small features for some of his skills. Example, Dual Swords Yuki can apply perfect fits extra damage twice using only one cufflink stack. Interesting. I kind of like the sniper skill. I'm not a huge fan, personally. Uh, and uh, skill indicator clarity for certain skills, accelerated tempo, meta, love that. Please accelerate the tempo of the game. Um, bug fixes and improvements. Okay, there's some important stuff in here and I would highly recommend you read through it, but it's mostly jargon for people who don't really care about the nitty gritty, but essentially they're, they're changing the interactions between movement skills and crowd control. Um, as we developed movement skills, different forms of CC and being unstoppable throughout our development, it caused internal complications with our game. For example, when a movement skill was already cast, it often caused a problem where a movement where the movement skill would not be canceled when CC'd. That's very true. Uh, airborne slash fear slash charm slash knockback slash suppress slash grab will now properly cancel movement skills immediately and apply crowd control effects. I'm a big fan of that change. What's up, Bail Plan? How you doing, buddy? Roots, stuns, sleeps, dances, and polymorphs will affect characters after the movement skill is complete and will apply crowd control effects even, or sorry, if there are remaining durations. Interesting. Now, immune to crowd control and unable to be immobilized and unstoppable will have a more clear distinction. Immune to crowd control effects such as Sua's W, uh, two hand sword skill parry, uh, all CC is negated entirely. Unable to be mobilized, Magnus's R, Hyunwoo W, and only movement stopping effects are negated. Other debuffs such as Silence Blind, uh, Vision Block, Disarm can still be applied. Uh, unstoppable, which is like Magnus's W. CC is applied but does not trigger. If the duration of the CC is longer than the duration of the Unstoppable, the CC is applied after the duration of the Unstoppable. So. Oh, I'm getting exhausted just reading all that. I'm going to summarize this as best I can, as best I understand it. This list of CC fucks over your movement skills. This list of CC does not fuck over your movement skills. However, if the movement skill ends and the stun is still, or whatever, is still in effect, you will then be stunned at the end. So, for example, if I stun a Aya, with any stun, if I stun an eye as she is eing away, it will not stop her ease length. However, if the stun is still in effect time-wise, by the time she finishes her dash, she will be stunned at the end of it. Now, as for the rest of this, what this means is... Oh, thank you, Bail Plan. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I don't like the sub, so here's some money. I appreciate it, man. I really, really do. Thank you. Uh, so, for these... If, you're, if the thing says CC immune, like Perry or, or, or Sua W, no CC at all, doesn't apply afterwards or anything, it's negated entirely. If you're unable to be immobilized, like uh, Magnus R or Hyunwoo W, the movement stopping effects are, got, are, 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 are taken off, so you cannot have your movement impaired whatsoever, but things that affect your fighting, such as silence, blind, vision, etc., those will be affected, and Magnus W will not be CC'd, but similar to this sort of stuff, if there is still a CC effect at the end of the Unstoppable, it will then be triggered. Okay? Is it Magnus Bike Unstoppable? Dude, I don't know. Uh, now it's unable to be mobilized or something. I I'm just telling you, that's the way it's written. 
this is kind of complicated, but it should make the game a little bit more consistent overall. Uh, let's see, what else is there? Auto loot time decreased from 1.2 to 1. I actually like that a lot. Um, okay, that's sort of the rest of it. Yeah, you can check it out. Uh, there's there's plenty of stuff to read. I'm not going to go over literally everything, but feel free to check it out. Maybe your character shows up here one way or another. But that's going to be it for the patch notes discussion. That's going to be it for me, guys. How did you feel about this patch? Did you like this patch? Because I'm going to tell you right here, right now, I love this patch. I think this genuinely addresses most of the issues in the game. It, 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 it touches on pretty much all the characters who are overperforming. It also buffs up a lot of other things too. I think it's a really good patch. Uh, let me know what you think. Hit me with your opinions. I also am really excited for 11.